Presently, we explore a disconcerting instance that pertains to Stephen Nicholas and Julia Simmons. As a resident of Stephen's three-bedroom detached home on the periphery of Portland, Oregon, Julia discovered herself entangled in an intricate network of connections. Stephen, a divorced day trader, was an individual she encountered online during her rental search. She was initially captivated by his disposition. Nevertheless, the situation changed when Stephen encountered Rhonda, Julia's 20-year-old daughter. Stephen, despite being 10 years elder, was enthralled by the aesthetic appeal and exuberant disposition of Rhonda. The mutual attraction surprised him, and the couple immediately began courting. Rhonda moved into Stephen's condominium as their relationship flourished, and the two became inseparable. Stephen developed a strong emotional connection with Rhonda's family, particularly her younger sisters, Melanie and Tessa. During this period, Tessa, who was nine years old at the time of Rhonda and Stephen's courtship, found Stephen's carefree disposition endearing. Stephen and Rhonda remained an engaged couple throughout the years, but they never exchanged vows. Friends knew that Rhonda frequently fantasized about what life as Stephen's wife would be like, as it was a fantasy she held dear. A 2009 summer wedding was a commitment Stephen made, but it never materialized. Their relationship underwent a transformation with the birth of their daughter. Rhonda embraced motherhood wholeheartedly, devoting each moment with her daughter to memory. However, she harbored a desire to resume her modeling profession. Following delivery, Rhonda was at her heaviest. Stephen's assertion that she felt unattractive prompted them to resolve to hike the top 25 trails in Oregon in an effort to lose weight after her pregnancy. Stephen asserted that their relationship was more robust than ever, characterized by few disagreements. On the contrary, Rhonda's companions painted an opposing portrait. It was disclosed that Rhonda had disclosed Stephen's abusive conduct to them. Even her injuries from an altercation with Stephen were documented. The married couple, accompanied by Rhonda, aged 23, began a hike along the Eagle Creek Trail on March 16, 2009. Rhonda used her smartphone to take a photograph of Stephen prior to their departure. She joked to her mother via text message. He will either present me with a ring or hurl me off a precipice. Ha ha. Stephen asserts that Rhonda exhibited peculiar behavior as they progressed along their trek in the pleasant weather. She inquired as to what consequences would ensue for their daughter in the event of an unforeseen event. He reassured her that their child would be in his care. As the climate started to, given the deteriorating weather conditions, Stephen proposed that they return to their residence. Devoid of retracing her steps, an audacious Rhonda draped a towel around her shoulders, proclaimed herself Supergirl, and set forth on a sluggish, narrow path. Stephen observed in horrification as Rhonda slid and fell approximately 150 feet down the side of the Eagle Creek Trail. Stephen claimed he descended into the ravine and cradled the deceased corpse of Rhonda where she had fallen. His lack of cellular service compelled him to abandon her in order to seek assistance. Emergency services were contacted from the trailhead by him. The following day, rescue personnel recovered Rhonda's remains. The family of Rhonda observed that Stephen exhibited a dearth of emotion during her memorial ceremony. Stephen ardently refuted this allegation, maintaining that he was overcome with grief and would rather grieve in solitude. Following Rhonda's passing, Stephen and their daughter made the unexpected decision to relocate to the opposite side of Oregon. This action incited suspicion within Rhonda's family. Stephen made the personal decision to commence a fresh phase in his life by relocating to China from the United States in 2006. After relocating to Waxi, a municipality situated approximately 75 miles away from Shanghai, Stephen secured employment instructing Chinese business professionals in the English language. His daughter acclimated rapidly to life in China. Within two months, she had achieved fluency in Mandarin. Landy Yinyan was a woman with whom Stephen became acquainted and fell in love during their time in China. Landy established an intimate connection with Stephen's daughter, assuming the responsibility of a maternal figure. Stephen proposed to Landy after one year of dating, and she agreed. To make arrangements for the nuptials, Stephen and his daughter returned to the United States in February 2015. Two ceremonies were organized one in China and one in the United States, to facilitate both relatives and associates. 
A day prior to his departure, Stephen and his daughter arrived in the United States. Stephen was apprehended by an officer in San Francisco, where they were en route to Oregon, on account of a problem identified in his satchel. Without his knowledge, this occurrence would instigate a sequence of occurrences that would profoundly transform his existence. Although Stephen was residing in China at the time, detectives investigated Rhonda's demise ceaselessly. They came to the conclusion that Stephen was at fault for her fall from Eagle Creek due to the peculiar circumstances that surrounded it. Mother Rhonda was instrumental in maintaining the investigation's momentum by communicating frequently with detectives to provide updates. Stephen was apprehended and extradited to Oregon at the airport on suspicion of murdering Rhonda. He felt as though he were in a dream after his arrest and awoke in China alongside Landy. Nonetheless, this was an unforgiving reality and not a fantasy. Stephen's bond was initially established at $2 million. 24 months later, he was incarcerated pending his trial. The magistrate ultimately reduced his bail to $250,000, with the surety being secured by his attorney. Following his release, Stephen was fitted with an ankle monitor. On hearing the news of Stephen's apprehension, Rhonda's family was ecstatic, as they believed that at last, justice was being served. Rhonda's mother was overjoyed and broke into emotions in particular upon learning the news. Bereaved family members of Rhonda found solace and comfort in the apprehension of Stephen, as they had been mourning her passing for years. Stephen's counsel and investigative team visited the Eagle Creek Trail, the location where Rhonda tragically perished. Subsequent to his apprehension, experimental procedures were intended to establish to the court that Stephen did not push Rhonda, but rather that her fall was an unintentional consequence. Eagle Creek Trail, one of the most travelled regions in the Columbia River Gorge, was renowned for its aesthetic appeal, not peril, according to the defence. During one of Stephen's preliminary hearings, it was disclosed by the medical examiner conducting the autopsy of Rhonda that all of her injuries occurred below the waist. This discovery was pivotal to the defensive strategy of Stephen, as it indicated the possibility that Rhonda had committed suicide. Stephen's defense team contended that Rhonda's fractured pelvis was caused by the impact of striking the ground, suggesting she fell feet first rather than a head over heels fall that would have indicated pushing. The defense team endeavored to introduce therapy session notes as evidentiary support, in conjunction with information pertaining to Rhonda's injuries. According to these notes, Rhonda was despondent but never admitted to having suicidal thoughts. Additionally, Rhonda's own description of her relationship with Stephen as loveless provided additional support for the defense's position. The defense team for Stephen contended that Rhonda's depressive symptoms and her account of their relationship were indications that she may have made the decision to terminate her own life. In order to refute the prosecution's hypothesis that Stephen caused Rhonda's fatal injuries by pushing her, they presented this evidence. Stephen subsequently asserted that prior to their encounter, Rhonda had struggled with depression and made numerous suicide attempts. Stephen, according to Rhonda's family, lied and placed the blame for her death on Rhonda in order to divert attention away from his own culpability. Furthermore, Stephen asserted that Rhonda had been afflicted with substance abuse since she was 12 years old. However, only trace amounts of marijuana and prescription medication for anxiety and depression, which Rhonda was taking due to postpartum difficulties, were found in the medical examiner's report. Concerning evidence came to light throughout the preliminary hearings. It was disclosed that Stephen had been romantically involved with Melanie, the 16-year-old sister of Rhonda. Given that Stephen was in his 30s and Melanie was still a minor, this revelation was startling. The state posited that Stephen's inappropriate association with Melanie might have constituted a plausible motive for the homicide of Rhonda. Stephen was indicted on two counts of third-degree sexual assault and three counts of third-degree sodomy in relation to his relationship with Melanie. Subsequent to his apprehension in the murder case of Rhonda, Stephen entered a plea of guilty to two counts of sexual assault while he was a defendant in the murder prosecution of Rhonda. Nevertheless, Stephen contended that his admission of sexual abuse was obtained under duress and that it was not in fact what he claimed. He explained that he entered a guilty plea in order to potentially regain custody of his daughter through litigation. Stephen and Melanie, according to the state, were involved in a relationship that spanned more than four years. 
Stevens subsequently acknowledged engaging in sexual activity with the adolescent sibling of Rhonda. The state presented Melanie with a text message that Rhonda had sent her prior to her and Stevens' perilous Eagle Creek trek. Rhonda called Stephen a piece of garbage and accused him of using Melanie to harm her in the text message. According to Rhonda's mother, Rhonda was cognizant of Stephen's attempt to sow discord between her and Melanie. She asserted that Rhonda desired to mend their relationship and cherished her younger sister. The state's assessment contradicts Stephen's assertions that the relationship between Rhonda and Stephen was perfect. Additional proof was presented to the court that implicated Stephen in deviant sexual behavior in the past. It was disclosed that Stephen, who have lost his daughter's mother, Rhonda, within six months, had been apprehended and formally accused of five counts of sexual assault. Stephen was initially accused of engaging in inappropriate contact with a 13-year-old female, a charge he refuted. However, he subsequently admitted to sending the girl a nude photo and a sexually suggestive text message, acknowledging the unsuitability of his conduct. He entered a guilty plea on a single count of sexual harassment. During one of Stephen's preliminary hearings, photographs of her injured back that Rhonda had taken were presented to the court. A closest friend of Rhonda's provided testimony in which she claimed to have overheard disputes between Rhonda and Stephen over the phone. The court was also presented with testimony from Stephen's ex-wife, who claimed that in November 2003 he attempted to suffocate her and hurl her over the handrail of their eighth-floor apartment. Stephen denied the allegations and was never charged in China in connection with this incident. The family of Rhonda is convinced that Stephen is the culpable individual in her passing. They suspect he assassinated her in order to obtain the proceeds of a recently increased life insurance policy. Rhonda's mother expressed her skepticism, asserting that Stephen was not financially stable and had suffered a substantial loss via day trading the year prior. Rhonda was adored by all who knew her, including her nine-month-old daughters, and she never would have committed suicide by leaping from Eagle Creek. The family of Rhonda was astounded and appalled in May 2017 when they learned that the state had scheduled a meeting with the defense and achieved a settlement. Criminally negligent homicide was the lesser charge to which Stephen pleaded guilty. The state acknowledged that despite their conviction that he was responsible for Rhonda's murder, their case against him was weak due to the absence of tangible evidence demonstrating that he had propelled her from the Eagle Creek Trail. Although Stephen was granted credit for the time he spent incarcerated pending trial, he was mandated to maintain parole for an additional three years. After the removal of the ankle monitor, Stephen was released from custody. The family and acquaintances of Rhonda believed that Stephen's plea bargain failed to achieve justice. They believed that his actions warranted more severe repercussions. Rhonda's sister delivered a resolute statement during the sentencing hearing for Stephen, in which she vented her ire and exasperation towards him. She informed him that he was responsible for inflicting immeasurable suffering and anguish on her entire family. Additionally, Rhonda's mother conveyed her perplexity and ire, stating that she failed to comprehend how Stephen could have absconded with her daughter, thereby destroying their family. Although Stephen maintained that he had not exerted any pressure on Rhonda and that she had willingly agreed to the terms in order to regain custody of his daughter, Rhonda's family and friends remained unimpressed. During an interview in 2018, Stephen expressed a startling assertion regarding the destiny of Rhonda. According to Stephen, Rhonda was still alive when he descended Eagle Creek on the day of her fatal fall. An interviewer asked Stephen, upon discovering Rhonda on the trail, whether he had put an end to her suffering. As a reply, Stephen presented a hypothetical dilemma. Would it be deemed murderous to terminate the life of a comrade in agony? He postulated that despite the fact that it constituted a homicide, such an action might be deemed justifiable. Although Stephen refrained from explicitly attributing any wrongdoing to Rhonda, his remarks suggested the potential for his complicity in her demise. Rhonda's infant daughter was the beneficiary of Social Security survivor benefits that were applied for by Rhonda's mother in 2017. She stated that her granddaughter resided with her and vowed to apply the benefits exclusively to the welfare of the child. However, the state alleged that the child had been residing with her father, Stephen, from April 2010 to December 2014, the time period during which Rhonda's mother claimed the child resided with her.
The state consequently indicted Rhonda's mother on charges of larceny of government funds, which totaled approximately $40,000 over a period of five years. Rhonda's mother was intent to prevent Stephen from obtaining custody of their daughter, according to the defense attorneys for Rhonda's mother. She was opposed to Stephen profiting from the $1 million life insurance policy he had purchased in the name of Rhonda. The defense contended that the motivation behind Rhonda's mother's actions was to safeguard her granddaughter and prevent her from being exploited. Additionally, they noted that Rhonda's mother suffered from melancholy, a condition that had deteriorated since the passing of her daughter. As an alternative means of managing her mourning, she resorted to the use of marijuana as a recreational drug. The defense team argued that her cognitive function was compromised and her judgment was clouded due to her substance use. Three years of probation and one month in a halfway house were imposed on Rhonda's mother, who pleaded guilty to the misappropriation of government funds at the age of 53, alongside the incarceration and probationary term. Rhonda's mother was mandated to reimburse the misappropriated benefits, which summed up to $39,100. Since October 2015, when the Department of Human Services assumed custody of the 13-year-old daughter of Rhonda and Stephen subsequent to Stephen's guilty plea to sexual abuse in the same case. The daughter had been in foster care. A court in Oregon consequently revoked his parental rights. However, Stephen filed an appeal of the ruling.